This is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast, hosted by Roman Prokopchuk, bringing you all things digital marketing, tech, business, and motivation. What's stopping you from becoming relentless in all aspects of life? Are you ready to become a digital savage? Let's get into today's episode. This is Roman Prokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience, episode 47, road tripping it with our foster kids. So this past weekend, we went on a kind of few state road trip. We drove down from New Jersey all the way to Kentucky, making a few stops along the way to take the kids to a bunch of things we thought they would enjoy. So we left Friday afternoon and headed through Pennsylvania stopped for dinner which dinner with two kids under three is a little interesting because they want things their way and we kept going past through West Virginia and ended up spending the night in Ohio we woke up early to get a good start on the day and basically headed to the it's called entertainment in Ohio it's the biggest model train indoor facility in the United States. So we did that for a few hours and we basically walked around and let the kids enjoy all the trains, which there were many and many, and went by basically time periods. So they started, I believe, in the 1800s and then you moved to another basically period and you ended it up with modern day. So they really liked that. We went to the gift shop, which they basically went through and wanted every little thing. But, you know, we got them one or two things to make them happy and kept going. We ended up in Kentucky where they have the Ark Experience, which is basically a huge life-size replica of Noah's Ark. Basically, two biblical parameters in terms of what the Bible said in terms of length, height, width. So it's this crazy big wooden structure in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. But it was pretty cool, and the kids liked a big boat, as they called it. There were three um, three floors we got to explore. The boat is like the size of two football fields, so there's like a lot to do. And there's other attractions in the area as well. And then passing by, we turned around on Sunday... And got to uh, spend the day in Pittsburgh. So we went to a few local food things. We took them to the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. Where they had a lot of fun. They did a few water activities. And stuff like that. And then we headed back. And stopped in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. For them to see the horse and buggies. As well as um, some of the Amish things. That the county had to offer so all in all we went from new jersey to pennsylvania to west virginia to ohio to kentucky and back again kind of did it in intervals which made the trip more bearable it's interesting packing up and driving with two little kids under three and each of them wanting something else at any given period of time but I think like with anything it's important to have structure so a time to sleep a time to have a snack a time to watch a video a time to go to the bathroom and anything else that's needed to be done and have a formal process in terms of discipline and when it's time to do something it's time to do something so the kids all in all enjoy the trip and it's definitely something they will remember and keep with them so obviously we don't know the circumstances of how long they're staying with us because they are our foster kids but each month they are with us we're going to try to take a trip either local or if we have to fly somewhere do that as well and try to give them as many experiences as they can For them to take in and remember the memories 
and whatever happens, you know, it's God's will for them and for us, but all we can do is love them and take care of them and show them how it is to be loved and cared for and treated right, and all these experiences that are outside of the area that they may be going back, that obviously if they went back, they would be limited to staying in one city most of the time based on the circumstances that they came out of. So taking these little kind of road trips that are impromptu, flying out to, you know, certain parts of the country, flying out to Disney World, taking them to Disney, getting them season passes to Six Flags, doing different zoos and aquariums and other things that they enjoy currently is definitely helping with kind of their emotional and intellectual development and kind of coping skills with you know whatever they had to endure and the crazy process they have to go through with dealing with all the people they have to see and be transported by and interviewed by in the foster process so doing things like that definitely helps and it's been rewarding for us as well um, and made us grow as a couple me and my wife So it's definitely nice to do things like that, especially, like I said, draft somewhere, even, you know, with an almost two-year-old and a -a three-and-a-half-year-old. It can be hectic. I mean, I see some people with kids that they lose it in public and stuff like that. But like I said, it's, it's, it's nothing but, you know, having good manners, having discipline, having, you know, rules. And sticking to a schedule, if you obviously let the kid just run wild, they will be a savage. They won't listen. They will do what they want if they know there's consequences for actions and they have to do things to get rewarded with other things that they may want. Um, You're teaching them discipline. You're teaching them a good work ethic and things of that nature. So they, for the most part, behaved in the car when we drove. Obviously, when they were hungry, they made that evident, or if they had to go to the bathroom. So we kind of had to work around their schedule for things of that nature. But other than that, it was a pretty smooth ride. (laughs) Otherwise than them asking a million questions, which kids their age do. But all in all, we saw some interesting things that you wouldn't think that they would be in the middle of nowhere in America. But I would definitely encourage you to take kind of road trips, explore the areas you're in or around you. I mean, it doesn't take much, obviously. If you don't have the money to travel to, you know, across the country or across the world, you can definitely explore your state or take a train or public transportation in somewhere and explore a free museum or go to an event and get, you know, an experience that will help mold you and kind of grow you as a person. Until next time, guys, take care. If you're like me, finding a place to eat is never an easy thing to do. Whether I'm in my hometown of Ewing, New Jersey or traveling, I always find myself wishing I had a trusted friend I could call to tell me where to eat. The infatuation is that friend. The infatuation helps you find the right restaurant for any situation. Need a place for a first date? Trying to find a spot for your birthday that you don't want to celebrate except you also kind of do? The infatuation has you covered in all of these situations and many more. So if you ever need to find a place to eat but don't want to read through thousands of unreliable crowdsourced reviews, hit up theinfatuation.com or download their free app for iOS and Android to search thousands of restaurant reviews and guides in 22 major cities around the world. Or let the infatuation do the work for you by sending a text to 64560. A real person will respond and help you find a restaurant that's perfect for whatever situation you find yourself in. This podcast has been brought to you by Nova Zora Digital. Find out how Nova Zora Digital can help your company grow online. Learn more at NovaZoraDigital.com. Until next time, all you digital savages.